the podcast episode 16 dealing with your sore spots hey what's good everybody guess who it's ben daily here and i want to welcome you to the podcast it's that simple it's called the podcast it's a different kind of podcast you know i want to come to you every week with good news in a world full of bad news i want to come to you with a whole lot of good news the glad and joyful news that God is good, that he loves you, that he will happily give up everything he has so he can have you. And contrary to popular opinion, God's not mad at you. He isn't even in a bad mood today. The gospel declares that he's happy, he's for you, he wants to share his life with you forever, and Jesus is proof of this. So we're going to talk about Jesus. And no matter what platform you're listening on, maybe watching on the video format, this podcast is just for you. No matter what you're doing. I had somebody write me an email recently and said they listen to the podcast while they're jogging. I had someone else say they listen while they're driving. I mean, I don't care what you're doing today. Running errands, working out, cleaning your house, sending emails. Wherever you are, I don't care. I hope the podcast encourages you today. Get something out of it. And if so, please add this podcast to your rotation. And do me a favor, rate the podcast. Leave a review. Come on, let's get this good news out everywhere. Tell somebody about it. Share it with somebody. Let's do it. Now, last week I talked about the heart. As a matter of fact, dealing with uh, sore spots, wounds on the heart. And um, I did something recently that I'm going to encourage you to do. Sit down and write out some of the lessons you've learned this year. As we're finishing out 2020, sit down and write down some of the lessons you've learned this year. I mean, really think about it. You know, one of the lessons I learned is that a, a marriage that's, that's good can get better. I learned that this year. This month I'm celebrating 27 years of marriage to my very best friend. And it just keeps getting better. Um, I learned this year the importance of silence. Man, in a world right now full of so much noise, the importance every day of silence, just to stop, find a place, and listen to God. And then I learned this year that a wounded heart can be healed. Jesus loves to heal wounded hearts. I started talking about sore spots on the heart last week. And I, I kind of used a story I thought about years ago. Uh, it was a Sunday morning, and I was, uh, you know, just greeting folks in the lobby. And I shook hands with a man, and when I shook his hand, he just winced, and he pulled away in pain. I mean, he looked like I just shot him, but all I did was shake his hand. And I didn't mean to hurt him. I, I, I was greeting him. I, I want him to feel loved, want him to feel accepted, want him to feel like he belonged. And I just gently shaking his hand and same thing I'd done to everybody else that day. And no one else had pulled away from me. Why did, why did this dude pull away from me? Well, I found out that he'd actually injured his hand uh, a few days before, had to have surgery. Um, here's what I had done. I had touched a sore spot. And physical injuries can teach us about heart wounds. And I love dealing with the heart. I tell you this year, it's been all about the heart, all about the heart. Let me tell you something. That's kingdom. That's, the, that's where the kingdom of God is. If you, if, if, if you want to know about harvest in your life, you're going to have to deal with soil. And soil is, is really the heart stuff. Some of you wonder why the Bible says guard your heart above everything else because out of it, that's where the harvest comes. 
And if you don't deal with your heart, let me tell you something, you're going to have uh, a harvest automatically. And if it's the wrong seed, let me tell you something, you're not going to like the harvest. And people with, with, with wounded hearts, let me tell you something, we need healing. Let's tend to our heart wounds. It's the best gift you can give anybody is a healed heart, a heart that's healthy. Because people with wounded hearts, let me tell you something, they react abnormally. Why? Because they're protecting sore spots. They're protecting wounds. They're protecting broken places. And uh, those places are on their soul. And, and so the slightest touch, whatever the touch is, and that hurting area is what's causing extreme pain in their life. And it's invisible. Those sore, those sore spots may be invisible. And, 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 and nobody knows where it's located until what? Somebody touches it. And it, it, it may not even be on purpose. But somebody touches the sore spot and guess what? Mm. Pain. You react. And wounded people act, react differently from healthy people and I talked about that last week on the podcast and if you missed it go back and check it out and check out any of the other podcasts that I got although we may have been wounded years ago our hearts may have been really wounded and many of us have very deep heart wounds and an unhealed sore spot is causing pain today for a lot of people and, and whenever someone says, whenever someone does something that, that triggers a, a very hurtful memory, what do we do? We wince in pain. We pull away because we're in pain. And the way we handle these sore spots are going to determine whether you are going to limp through life, licking your wounds, or whether you are going to allow Jesus to heal your injuries. When I'm talking about your injuries, I'm talking about your heart. And you're going to live victoriously. Listen, you are not to be limping through life. You are victorious. And I just remind you of that today. So last week, here's what I did. I looked at uh, some of the symptoms that indicate maybe you're still aching from past hurts. Go back and check it out. We dealt with being easily injured and, you know, suspicious you're suspicious of people or you got a hard time loving people. You got that old victim, that victim mentality. That is a big one. Let me tell you, that is a big one. The victim mentality, that defensive attitude. So how do we deal with sore spots? That's what I want to talk about today real quick. And I want to give you keys to healing. Today is your day for healing. I'm declaring today that we are unlocking healing for those internal injuries, we're dealing with the heart. Are you ready? Here we go. You may want to share them today, but let me give them, let me give them to you first. The first one I would say is, is this right here. I call it the petition key. This is a key for healing. And, and when I say the petition key, I'll tell you, I can, I can hear it now. Well, Pastor Ben, come on. Why, why, is, why is petition the first key to my recovery when I'm talking about healing of a heart wound, a sore spot. Because I'll tell you why the petition key is a big one. God wants us to get very specific when we pray, when we talk to him. And I'm going to give you an example. That word, the word petitions in, uh, let's take 1 John 5, are actually the Greek words that denote a specific, exact, explicit precise, detailed request. This request that I'm talking about is so in-depth, so thorough, so comprehensive that there's no room for misunderstanding exactly what's been asked. So with that meaning in mind, I want you to, to listen to 1 John 5, verse number 15, especially with the meaning meanings of, of these Greek words. In mind. Think about this. 1 John 5.15 could be interpreted like this. Listen. And if we can be confident that God hears us, regardless of what we ask or what physical or, or tangible need we may want him to meet for us, we can be sure that we will have a yes to the specific, exact, explicit, detailed request that we desire of him. So let me ask you this real quick. Come on. When... 
you pray? Do you pray these general sweeping prayers for blessings? Or have you learned the secret of getting real specific with God when you pray? Let me tell you, that, that kind of vague general prayer, that may be cute. Let me tell you, that may be cute for a little kid. But as you grow in your grace walk, let me tell you, your father expects you to get bold, to get courageous, to get very specific about the things that you request from him. Yeah, it's time to get specific. That's one of the things that I've been doing this year during my time of prayer and meditation is just saying, Lord, this is an area right here. I tell you, I'm not quoting this thing. This is an area that I'm telling you, I am receiving healing. I see you healing this area, and I get real specific. I thought about how Jesus, he one time encountered a uh, a blind beggar. Uh, The guy's name was Bartimaeus, and he's crying out for mercy in Mark 10. And listen to this unusual question that Jesus asks him. Are you ready for this? Boy, you talk about getting specific. He says, hey, dude. What do you want me to do for you? (laughs) What do you want me to do for you? What an opportunity. Jesus offered Bartimaeus a blank check. What do you want me to do for you? And all he had to do is fill in the amount on that check. He's blind. I want eyes that can see with 20-20 vision. And although, come on, the answer seemed obvious. You know what I think? Jesus wanted Bartimaeus to be specific in his request. And, and I can imagine, I'm telling you, I, 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 I can imagine Jesus responding to, 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 to some of my prayers much as he spoke to, to, to Bartimaeus. Think about that. Oh, oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Okay, what do you want me to do for you? Well, please come to me. Okay, what do you want me to do for you? Well, please bless me. Okay, what what do you want me to do for you? Help me. Okay, what do you want me to do for you? Are y'all getting this? Maybe, maybe, maybe you don't relate to God in quite that way. But but I think Jesus' instruction to, to to pray specifically for our our, our needs, these healings of these sore spots, helps us to spell out and. Spell and spill out what we really uh, want to, to, to ask. And, 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 and the reason why I bring this up is because I don't think some people want to be healed. They'd rather sulk than be saved. They, they'd rather be a victim than live as, as, a, as a victor. you got to examine yourself, and you got to be honest. A whole lot of people, I don't know if they really want to be healed when it comes to the sore spots on their heart. They may say they want to, but do you really do, do you really want to be made well? Hey, on another occasion, real quick, I know I got I to gotta move along, but Jesus was at the pool of, of uh, Bethsaida where he encountered a, a lame man who had been on a mat. Now think about this. Talk about, you talk about wounds. He's on a mat. You ready for 38 years, almost 40 years, I think John 5. And Jesus asked this, do you want to get well? That's that's another bizarre question. To ask a man who had not walked, think about it, four decades. And Jesus wanted this man, this lame man, to, to examine himself to find out if he actually wanted to be cured or if he just wanted sympathy. Because I wonder sometimes when we're dealing with heart wounds, I don't know if people really want to be healed or they just want sympathy. And many wounded people would rather carry their mat of self-pity than receive their healing that Jesus has already provided. And I don't know what your mat is today. Wounds from others, guilt from past sin, shame, a life filled with addiction. I don't know. What's the petition? Hey, what's up? Sylvia here, and I'm one of the dream teamers here at Calvary. One of the best ways to stay connected here is to join the Calvary Text Club. Get updates, encouragement, and stay in the know about all things Calvary. To join, text Calvary to 888-465-2275. Are you getting specific? 
exact, explicit, precise, detailed. Jesus, this is the area that I receive my healing and I walk in victory. How about that one? The petition key. Here's, here's another one, the confession key. Now, this is a big one. I'm only giving you three today. But the confession key. Confession, I think, is another key to, 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 to really recovery or victory in your life. When, when I, I thought about this. You know, when you're checking into a hospital, a patient must give the doctor permission to find out what's wrong. Right? The, the, the patient can't be healed if, if he keeps pushing the doctor away. Trying to guard the injury. Covering up the injury. As long as he covers up the sore spot, the injury will continue to fester in darkness. It's got to be brought to the light. Con confession, agreeing with God, saying the same thing, transfers your wound out of the darkness into the light where Jesus can treat you, where Jesus can heal you. I thought about Ephesians 5. It says this, all things become visible when they're exposed to the light. Can I tell you today, those of you that are dealing with deep heart wounds, healing begins the moment you expose your wound to the light. Confession means what? It means to admit, come on, maybe, hey, I've held on to this thing for too long, but I admit today, I agree with you, God, that I'm not a victim. I agree with you, God, that you've provided everything I need for life, for godliness, for healing, for restoration. I, I confess that today. I believe it today. I receive it today. I thought about even James 5, 16, talking about confession. It says this, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Jesus never carried an offense because he understood the power of confession. And in Matthew 16, I, I think around verse 22, 23, when, when Satan used uh, Peter to rebuke Jesus, Jesus said this, hey, get away. Get away from me, Satan. You're, you're a dangerous trap. There it is. Or an offense. Offense is, it means trap. You, you're a trap to me you're thinking merely from a human point of view and not from God's point of view when I confess I'm agreeing with God's point of view and Jesus didn't fall into the trap you know what he did he uncovered that sore spot quickly he dealt with it and I'll tell you failure to admit the hurt the sore spot is what keeps the wound in darkness which provides fertile soil again the heart fertile soil for the root of what the root of bitterness to grow that's why Hebrews 12 says this see to it that no, that no one comes short of the grace of God that no root of bitterness Springing up causes trouble. And look at this. When bitterness hits your heart, it goes on to say, and by it many are defiled. Look at this. It's not just about you. When bitterness hits your heart, it springs up and it affects everybody. It affects your circle. It affects your family. It affects your home. It affects everything. You talk about yielding a harvest in your life. Bitterness is the, is the offspring of an unhealed wound in your heart. You've got to deal with it. And confession is one of those keys that bring about healing. Let me close with one more uh, today, and it's this. When we're talking about healing, it's this one. It's a big one. And I think, I can't remember the exact number of the podcast I did on forgiveness, but I want to say this today. When it comes to healing those sore spots on the heart, the forgiveness key, this is a big one. We talk about the petition key. We talk about the uh, confession key. But this one here, the forgiveness key forgiving those who have wounded you, who've hurt your heart. That's a third key, I think, to recovery. This is a big one. Unwillingness to forgive, I really believe, is the number one barrier that shuts down healing. And unforgiveness is the primary reason why sore spots are never healed in the first place. Unconditional forgiveness, when an offense occurs, can prevent a sore spot from forming on your heart. And if you want to be healed, and I really believe you do, wow, we got to stop wishing evil to come upon those who've offended us, who've hurt us, who've wronged us. I'm telling you, God rushes to the aid of those who forgive without reservation. Now, now this is one of my favorites, Colossians 3.13. Listen to this. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Now watch this. 
This is new covenant. Forgive. This is good news. Forgive as quickly and completely as God has already forgiven you. Now in the old covenant, you forgive to be forgiven, but watch this. That's before the cross. After the cross, watch, we forgive because we're already forgiven. I can't forgive you without the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you, I can try. But the Holy Spirit is always pointing me to Jesus. I'm forgiven because of what he's already accomplished. And the more I keep my eyes right there on my forgiveness effortlessly, I can begin to forgive those who have hurt me. And I get it. Some of you say, yeah, but this is an ongoing, an ongoing process. You're right. I guess the only process is you learning more and more and more how forgiven you truly are. That's why I think the podcast is so important. That's why I think gathering and corporate worship is so important in a local church to be reminded over and over and over again how forgiven you are. Because let me tell you something, you forget. Y'all old school people, I'm thinking about this. Y'all old school folks remember whiteout. Anybody ever use a typewriter? You young folk don't know nothing about whiteout. That, that magic liquid that, cover, <laughs> that covers you know, over your errors, your, 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 your typos, your, your, your unfortunate slip-ups. Remember whiteout? You, you, you just brush on that little, that little liquid and, and you start all over again, hopefully this time with no, no slip-ups. Well, look, some say, well, whiteout is forgiveness, right? It's, it's an obliteration of a goof with no telltale traces that the goof happened at all. Well, I want to go to the next level. No, whiteout only covers but I want to tell you something. God didn't just cover it. He cut it off. He removed it. As far as the east is from the west, never to reattach it or reconnect it to you again. You are forgiven. Aren't you glad God did better than white out? Let me tell you something. Aren't you glad he forgave you by the blood of his son? Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washed, it cleansed white as white. Why I, I mean, it's gone. It's gone. All your past mistakes, all that shame, all that sin, all them mess ups, all them unfortunate slip ups. He forgave you. Watch if that's true. Why don't we forgive? Why don't we forgive the people who have offended us? There's healing for you today, and I declare it on this podcast. There is healing for you today. Psalm 34, if your heart is broken, come on, are you dealing with sore spots? That's where you find God. He's right there. He's not far from you. If you feel like you've been kicked in the gut, he's right there to help you catch your breath. As a matter of fact, wherever you are, take a deep breath right now. God's helping you catch your breath. Psalm 51 says, heart shattered lives ready for love. Don't for a moment escape God's notice. Oh, come on. He notices every wound you've ever picked up on your heart. He doesn't just notice it. He wants to bring healing today. Come on. That's why Luke 4, Jesus said he was sent to what? To heal the brokenhearted. He's into heart healing. Not condemning heart healing. Not heart breaking, heart healing. May you receive it today, healing in Jesus' name. May you remember in this process of healing of your heart, the petition key. Go ahead, talk to him about it. Be specific. I want to be healed in this area right here. And let him uncover those areas and just get in there. And, and, and no condemnation and no judgment, no shame. He loves to heal those areas. And then the confession key, start agreeing with God. Put it out there, receive your healing, and then the forgiveness key. Start to let it go and start to really live. And you're not forgiving for their sake. You're forgiving for your sake. Really live. Really live. You can really live. Jesus says, I came and I want to give you a life back. You can really live. Today on the podcast, I declare it over you. May your heart be healed. Now, today, if you receive this this word I've spoken over you, I want to help you. You can download the Calvary Church app. By the way, that's where I have the privilege of, of serving as, 
as pastor at Calvary Church. And the app is simply in the app store. It's one word, Calvary Church CC. And when you download, there's a more tab, and I want you to hit it. And then I want you to go to this, this, this tab that says Believer's Guide, and I want you to hit that because there's a free resource there for all of you. And I want to help you. And this is a great resource for you because you may have questions along the way, all kinds of questions. Questions like this. What happens when I receive the life of Christ? Who is God? Who is the Father? Who's Jesus Christ? Who's the Holy Spirit? Why do I need a Savior? What's the Bible? How do I read it? What is the gospel? You keep talking about the gospel. What is the gospel? I talk about that. What does grace mean? I talk about that on and on and on. So much more. And it's free. And it's for you. There's a whole lot of other good resources. In the app. and Let's stay connected. Are you following me on social media? I think it's just at Ben W. Daily. I want to stay connected with you. I want you growing in grace. I want to help you live the life that you were meant to live. I hope you enjoyed the podcast today. I'll be back real soon. Can't wait to see you again. Talk to you again on the podcast. Hey, what is up? McKay is here, and I'm one of the pastors here at Calvary. I wanted to come on here quickly and invite all pastors and leaders to check out GCCM, Gospel Circle of Churches and Ministries. We love what's happening, and it's really a dream come true. Join us to have access to monthly connect calls, staff connects, gospel circles, new covenant worship, our message series, graphics, the custom GCCM app, and more. Make sure you check out gccm.cc today.